for lifting weights and either stretch alarm. Yes, sir. Mr. Peter Chen. And he is our alum of 1952 batch of electrical engineering. He was in RK Hall. And uh, we have our respected professor VK Tiwari, our director, here with us. Sir, I will request Professor Tiwari to to have his opening speech about the workshop. It was actually Professor Tiwari's and Mr. Chan's brainchild to have the workshop on wellness and well-being, which goes to all of us, all individuals. And that's why all of you, irrespective of whatever you are associated with, whichever department you are associated with, including the campusites, are invited. So I request Professor Tiwari to have his opening speech, sir. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Peter Chen, I think uh, we invest, uh, invented him when we were trying to go to UK uh, last uh, <laughs> September or so. And uh, friends, it is we are so happy that uh, uh, this gentleman who is only uh, the 28 year old, so I don't say he's 82, it is, he's <laughs> 28 only. Because you see the enthusiasm. I wonder if the, the food that we are getting now will keep us <laughs> like him that, uh, up to that age. And um, see, when, I, when we went myself, uh, Professor um, uh, Devashis and uh, our uh, um, Surjipal, my wife was also there. Uh, when we met him, we did not find a single, ah, please come, please come. Uh, we did not find a single time that he was, uh, uh, he was uh, thinking about anything. He was positive, full to the brim always. Positivity is the name of Peter Chen. Yes, please come. Yes, this is one thing which we must learn. Uh, if you if you get an opportunity, I don't know whether he has got a video of his whole um, umpire, whole umpire. I will do. I will yes, do good. So then you will know that it's about seven acres, right? Eight acres. Eight acres. <laughs> Just so in eye. eight acres, he has created empire which you will uh, be proud of, and we are all proud of him for that. That uh, the mm, something on uh, a subject which he never read. He never read in electrical. He's an electrical engineer. By, by his uh, training at IIT Kharagpur, but he has many first to his uh, credit, like uh, he is still the fastest cyclist of this campus from the time he was there till today. Nobody has broken their card. So let us give him a big hand. <laughs> and uh, uh, I, I was just trying to find out last year itself, then says, sir, nobody has broken their card. So I said that your record is still there if you want to try <laughs> at this age, maybe somebody will be there who can uh, think of that. So that record is there. Uh, and then uh, he has told yesterday, in fact, he did not tell us at, uh, when we were there in his place that uh, he used to go to Calcutta several times on his bike, several times on his bike. We cannot imagine, right? And then he used to walk on the rail line. Kolaghat bridge. Eh? Kola bridge. Kola bridge. Can you imagine that? That uh, bridge he used to, I mean, uh, that was a very narrow line. You, have you seen that? <laughs> now, see how he used to do that, the stamina and the concept as well as the timing. He knew that the train will come after this man. So, he used to walk on that line. As you just imagine, the confidence he had. The confidence he had at that particular time. So the same confidence he is carrying even today and uh, we are sure that he will be carrying it for a long time. And uh, he will keep on enthusiasm, giving enthusiasm to each and every person. If you go to the mm, place where he is, uh, mm, he calls herons, I do not know what is the meaning of herons, he will tell us uh, details. Uh, it was not difficult to locate, please come, it was not difficult to locate his uh, house, his uh, farmhouse I should say. Yes, it is a farmhouse. That's right. Yes, and uh, his offices, he has done everything on his own, everything on his own. And most importantly, we were nine of us, and he cooked food for us 
all everything except one or two items was cooked by his neighbor who is also an IT and both husband to wife, mm -hmm. right? So they had also come. And uh, we had very good, uh, I think uh, it was lunch, right? Lunch. We had very good lunch in his house, all cooked by Mr. Peter Chen. So today, if you think uh, we are male, but even the ladies say, no, no, we have to eat in our house. We have to eat in our house, we have to eat in our house. But see this man, see the confidence of this man, see the enthusiasm that oh, they are coming. And uh, when yesterday when I met him, he said, ah, Director Sahib, I am here with in one piece. This is the language which he used to use when we were a student. Mm -hmm. you can, <laughs> yeah, ah, come on, yaar, one piece, I am here in one piece. Okay. So he said, so much. See, if you lose your luggage on the way, and it's an international flight, you will have lot of trouble. I know everybody uh, first year say, wo suru ho re, ki holo, ki holo, kya karenge, kidhar gaya, kidhar gaya. But see the confidence and the smile on the face of this gentleman. He never bothered. He never bothered that, okay, kya hoga. Jo ho gaya, hai, it's part of life. And he says that I have not done very bad because in 60 years, that this is the first time that he has, yes. <laughs> so he has lost it, nothing much. See the confidence and see the, see the way of tackling situation. I was just talking the other day that it is ten per, your life is 10 percent what you get, but 90 percent how you react to a situation. 90 percent what you react to a situation. If you are reacting to a situation violently, then your mind is off. You cannot take a correct decision. Now you see he has, he has simply said, okay, fine. He has to leave the ticket. I think he lost the next is the flight from Bombay to this place also. It does not matter, so he purchased a ticket. In fact, I said that let us send a flight to him, I think, ticket. He said, no, no, he has already managed. You see, this is life. This is life. I think you should, if you have to learn anything of what he wants to say, wellness or life, I think Peter Chen is the right person for a campus like this. We have several people. We have from our Safai Wala to uh, director. All of us are having the life. And we, we have a different life altogether, right? But we don't know how to live. Because I can tell you, we have always conflict of something or the other in our mind. But that is that one thing which is keeping us unhealthy. This is my way of looking at things. In the campus, I know our ladies will think that, okay, inka husband professor ho gaya, hamara husband nahi hua, hum baat nahi karenge. It's a fact. It's a fact. I, I've been in the campus for now 50 years, I can tell you. I can tell you. Which should not go, which should not go to the ladies. They should not filter. They should be enjoying music, talking to everybody, but no, that has the case. And not from now, I tell you, when I was a student at that time also I used to hear because I was son of a faculty. So my father never bothered. He had a passion for cars, small cars mm -hmm. and uh, vintage cars. Uh -huh. So he was never bothered. So he has a vintage car, a motorcycle and he used to uh, repair and uh, understand that. But other people they used to uh, say, that's what I'm telling. This should not be there. Ladies should not be taking, but they have lot of pressure. They have lot of pressure. His son has done well. He has got into IIT or his son, daughter has gone into IIT. Hey, my daughter will get or not. Chinta. For nothing. Just don't worry about why do you create. And by that, he is creating a pressure or he or she is creating a pressure on the child also. So you see that these are the things now, these are inputs to you. That this is what is the, the society here. Our student friends, they are very smart. They are very, very smart. I don't know how many students are here, but when we meet them, we say, you are lakho mein ek. Wo samajhti nahi ki lakho mein ek ka value kya hai. Kyunki this was told to me by my grandfather, my maternal grandfather in 1974 when I got into IIT. He said that, hey, beta, tum lakho mein ek ho. Yaha koon sunne mein aata hai ki us mein. You see that you, that time, one lakh people did not appear in JE. That time, I think 75,000 or something people <coughs> appeared. Uh, maybe something like that uh, during that period. But see, this is the feeling. And these people are coming out of 13 lakh. 13 lakh people are appearing from JE mains to JE advance and then they are coming. They are not realizing how brilliant they are, how much their parents have worked on them. They have not realized. They start feeling that, we have job, we have got a job. No, it should not happen. It should not happen. You are very, very good. There things will come to you. Take it easy. Learn from him. He will tell you how to think positive and remain fine. This is what we are going to hear from Mr. Peter Chen. 
I don't want to tell his biodata because his biodata I cannot read. It is so many books he has written. There is a plant which he was uh, nursing 500 year old, right? 500 year old. Yes. 500 year bonsai plant, he was, he said, that he showed it to us that it has come to me, I have completed and has, it has gone or it is still there? Yeah, still there. <laughs> still there. So, he, it will go to some place from where it has come. 500 year old bonsai plant and bonsai is the life for our uh, Peter Chan. He said to me, to us, right, that uh, from 5 dollar, uh, 5 pounds, mm. from 5 pounds to 450. No, 45,000 45, pounds. 45,000 pounds, one plant. He is selling, his company is selling. You imagine that it's all acquired and uh, uh, made himself. Please come, please come. Oh, you great. Very good. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Come, come, come. Yeah, these are foreign students from America. Huh. We have Peter Chen here. Yes. So, uh, so, friends, I can tell you that uh, I hope that he will show you the video of what he has, his empire, he should show. I will. Okay. And then he will tell you how the life we should uh, take it and how we should react to situations in life and how to feel happy. With this small introduction of this great person, I wish that uh, we would like to hear you, uh, Mr. Peter Chen. The floor is yours. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hello. Thank you. I've got mic. I have mic. I can use this. Yeah? On, on. This is forward, yes. and this is backward. Can you open this? I need to send the second one. Well, good morning, friends. Thank you, Director Saab, for your very kind introduction. I don't deserve that. Whenever I go to places, I always introduce myself as a Mali. I'm nothing more than that. Uh, so, enough said. I remember when I used to come to IIT, for past 30 years I've been coming back on and off. Professor Sanyal used to take me around the campus and all his other colleagues used to ask me, what do you do, Peter? So I said, you know, I'm only in the plant business. So they said, what plant? Gas plant, electrical plant? No, I said, it's plant plant, you know, not anything sophisticated like that. So I always pride myself in being a Mali, nothing more, nothing less. But it just shows what IIT people can do. They are able to do anything in life. And as the uh, director has already told you, the fact that you are here means that you're all very, very clever, savvy people. You can do anything in life. And that is what I have realized long back. And of course, the RK and IIT tempo has always been high in my life. It's about positivity. I've never been an outward going person. I'm a very shy person, basically. But despite that, you can still live your life uh, very well. So without wasting too much time, the subject of today's workshop, I call it a workshop. I'm not here to give you lecture or to teach. It is a joint effort. Everything is interactive. You share your thoughts with me and I will share my thoughts with you. I don't mind if you interrupt uh, my uh, lecture at any point at all. So wholeness and well-being. Now, do you feel good today? Do you all feel good today? Yes. Okay, that's very nice. Did you feel good yesterday? Yes. <laughs> I didn't feel good yesterday, but it was very short-lived. Professor Saab stole my thunder because I lost all my luggage. I'm only coming with the clothes I'm wearing. This is all I have. <laughs> so, and two other people lost their luggage in the plane, and they were crying. They were literally crying at Mumbai airport. Absolutely crying. I got a bit upset, but I said to myself, it's no good. What can I do? If you cry, it won't bring the luggage back. So you've got to be positive. And, you know, I enjoyed the journey. And enjoy the, enjoy the journey. You know, that is an experience in life. Every experience in life is useful. 
however bad, however good it is, it is useful. Never, never underestimate bad experiences. They teach you how to live life. So that is the positive way of thinking. Your entire mindset, your entire life has to be based on that concept. So, and do you feel good all the time? Honestly, we don't feel good all the time. There are times when you feel bad, there are times you feel good, but that is all part of life. As I say, being in IIT should make you feel very good. You are privileged people, so you should feel very good. I don't need to elaborate on that. Now, what is this wholeness and well-being all about? There are many factors. We are all theoretical, mental, savvy people. So if you analyze it, you will see that the factors that affect your well-being are these wider factors, like the economy, whether there's war or absence of war. Look at these poor people in Ukraine. They must be having a terrible time, isn't it? There is war there. So they couldn't be feeling very good, the state of the world. And that is the political situation. Then there's the physical environment, the air quality, the water, housing, all these things. You know, there's so many things that affect, impinge on your well-being. And then, of course, more close to yourself are the personal factors. Your family, friends, yourself, and the spirituality as well. They all affect you. So we are a totality. You cannot just say, I'm a student, I'm here, you know, to improve my mind. It is your total person that needs to be considered and developed. And it can be developed. So let us look at that. So wellness and well-being, vast subject. And you see how wide it can be. It is a huge, huge subject. And today's workshop, we can only touch on a little part of it. So let us not try to be too clever and take too much. Just let's home in on things that we can talk about. So as I say, let us confine it to these more immediate things. So what are the factors that you can control. All right, let us not try and control the world environment. We cannot stop the Ukraine war that easily. We can control our own war within ourselves. Now look at this, let us come closer to home, the campus environment. And very important because we're always obsessed with the students, the staff, academic and support staff, you know, all the cooks and all these people, they're all having an important bearing on your life. It is the totality. I must confess that when we were students, you never think, how do the poor mess servants live? We don't think of these things. They are very important. They are important part. They're human beings. This is how our mindset should work. We should look to the well-being of everybody. So I hope this workshop should focus on all these things as well. Director Sab, I don't need to tell you but you have to oversee all these things. So I hope your colleagues will see the totality of the picture. It is very important to look at the totality because we are working as a team. Team spirit is the most important thing. In life, you will discover that you cannot work alone. You must work as a team. And the more harmonious the team, the more successful you are. So look at it. What the areas we should be looking at are the living working conditions, all the physical infrastructure. Of course, the campus is very brilliant. When we came, or when I came in 1958, how many of you were born then? I bet no one was born in that time. <laughs> First time I saw IIT was in May 1958. It was very beautiful and clean, but the campus itself was a jungle. It was a complete jungle. RK Hall was just built. There was concrete everywhere. You could smell the concrete and there were dogs and jackals running everywhere in the corridors, and it was a complete jungle, but we enjoyed our life. So there you are, <laughs> it's not like it is today, but we enjoyed our life there, and that impression still lasts to this very day. So let us see, there's so many, it is a vast, vast minefield, if you look at it. I hope you will be able to look at these slides and analyze it and see how these things impinge on you. I don't need to go into each of these areas, but it just gives you 
a flavor of the totality that impinges on your uh, well-being because they affect our well-being and our happiness. <coughs> so, stakeholders, we call them stakeholders. Everyone is a stakeholder. Students, staff, support staff, they are all stakeholders. And we must always remember that. So, then what are the things that can enhance the social life and make life enjoyable? There's so many factors that impinge on you to make the social life. It's not just about studies. When you come to IIT, you've cleared the hurdle, you've got into IIT. Make the most of your life here, enjoy it, and learn to live a total life. Learn to live a total life. Why is there so much you know, bad vibes in the mind, people are depressed and all that? You need to change the mindset. Look at it in a different way. I don't know how you can do it, but I'm sure everyone, students, the gymkhana, the staff, the support staff, they should all be aware that these things are important and they can help that mindset. I don't like to talk about all these other topics which you know what I'm meaning. You know, why do people get into that mindset? You know, we should be aware, should support people, and all these factors are very important. And then we should see zero number in that area, you know. So it should not happen. And it is possible to do it. It's not just inevitable. Now, when it comes to these areas, let us look at the academic stuff, the workload, both for the students and staff, the pressure on students and staff. You've got to ask yourself, is it appropriate? You know, do the staff look at these things? Is it appropriate? Are you putting too much pressure on them? You know, so these things have to be considered. And there should be a two-way feedback between students and staff. After all, when you've got into IIT, you are the top, top. You're not a dunce. I'm going to mention this when I give, hopefully, the convocation address. I was not a brilliant student, I can tell you that. In electrical engineering, in those days, there were three departments that were of consequence. There was civil, which was the most important, then mechanical second, electrical third. Every other department was not considered worthwhile. Sorry, sir. Agricultural engineering was the bottom. If you didn't get admission to any of the other ones, you were sent to <laughs> that department. So, um, and when I was in electrical, there were 125 students. The campus in those days had 2,000 students, maybe 1,500 undergraduates, 500 PG students. And in my class of 125 in electrical engineering, I was never at the top quartile, or I was at the bottom quartile. I was usually about 115 to 120, not 125. But soon I realized that physically, you don't need to be a mathematical genius to realize that not everyone can be number one. Someone has to be number one. Someone has to be 125. What's the big deal? You know, you're all bright anyway, so it's only a you know, relative thing. So don't get upset by these things. Uh, I'm sure this professor realized that you were bright, but you know, there's someone always better than you. Everyone realizes that when you come into IIT, you think before you came to IIT that you were very clever because you got into the uh, institute, but you will realize there are so many people brighter than you. Even in our days, 1958, there was one guy called Julka, I think he changed his name to Narendra Kumar. He became the director of Indian Institute of Science. And um, he was like a walking dictionary. At the age of 18 or 90, we always used to go to him to explain what is the theory of relativity, you know? What is about the space and things? He could explain everything to us. He was an absolute genius. So we had people like that. So the IIT is full of people like that. So. Um, don't worry about this, and I would appeal to the staff members, staff members who are here, do consider this thing, because the pressure on the students is uh, sometimes the cause for that. And you should review this carefully and see what are the areas that you can help improve. And for God's sake, get the interaction of the students to see whether they feel that it is appropriate or not. Now let us come to our more personal thing. We're looking at it from three points. 
as a student, as the academic staff and support staff. And then not only that, the wider family and friends. It's not just about you, it's about all these wider factors that impinge on you. Now, in the campus, I noticed that is a well-being center. I would like to visit that and whoever the staff is who is looking after that. So, all these are the factors that impinge on you. The mental well-being, psychological, and also the physical well-being. How healthy you are, all these things have a bearing on your happiness. Now, I don't know, I'm not you know, in daily touch with IIT, but these are the things we need to look at. The support network. The support network is very, very important. You see, how effective it is. All these. I think we can come and discuss these things in the forum. Please feel free to discuss these things over here. We will return to this in a minute. So, now, as I say, on a personal level, most people, not everyone is the same. We are all individuals. In this room, every single person is an individual. There are no identical twins here. So some people are naturally predisposed to being happy. Some people are reserved. So all these factors have a being. But even if you're reserved and don't outwardly show a smiling face, you can still be happy and content in your mind. So like students, if they're away from home for the first time, I remember when I came to the campus, I never left home in all my life at the age of about 17 and a half when I joined the campus, but I felt so much freedom. You know, the first time I had release, I was a new person. So the, the, there's that feeling. But some people feel homesick. So what is the support network there is on the campus for the students? And then, of course, the support, you know, the ward students, all these things. How accessible can you get? We will talk about these in a minute. And of course, don't struggle like all things, never keep it to yourself. You must discuss and di must discuss these problems widely. So, and then let us look at the wider community of the campus. Don't always just think that the students, I know the students are all important, but there are these other people who have a bearing on your well-being and their well-being as well. If they're not happy, you cannot be happy as well. So we must look at the totality of everything. And are they being capered? You know, you've got to ask yourself, are they included? So I think I've touched on these wider subjects. Now, because this is a workshop, I'm not here to lecture you. I want this to be a discussion where some of these factors that I have just touched upon can be discussed wider. So who wants to kick off? Can anybody just contribute and talk about it? Please don't be shy. Is it? You find that difficult? Yeah. Do you find that is uh, some uh, support here or? Yes. Getting used to. Okay. So what support are you getting here? Yeah. I see. Is there a network for that you find? Mm. Mm. Yeah. Who do you find easier to communicate, your fellow students or the wardens? I think uh, wardens and all can be a bit removed, isn't it? Uh, mm. Yes, obviously. Oh, I see. Okay, that's very difficult. Okay, yeah. Yes. Oh. But 
you find the campus a friendly place? Okay. Oh, okay. All right. Any other contributions? Please speak. Can you stand up and just so we can all hear? Uh -huh. That is neighboring country of India, mm -hmm. and I had come uh, to this institution last first of April. I'm with my daughter. Mm -hmm. She's my only one daughter, and in Bangladesh there is no one to uh, look up them because her mm -hmm. father is a military man, mm -hmm. and uh, she has a lot of duties. And my daughter is also very much uh, uh, feel comfortable to uh, uh, stay along with me. So then I asked the permission to give authority and they gave it to me because other institutions they have different kinds of rules and regulations that you know uh, this uh, as it was done are you a student or staff here student student Before, uh, okay student. oh okay no no it's okay so that time they gave me the opportunity to come uh, join this place mm. to come along with my daughter yes Mm. Uh, to learn uh, the bicycle and it was severe accident oh. and it was needed an operation also oh. and that was the uh, 17th April oh. and that day uh, basically this uh, that time there is no one uh, along with me in my from my family side oh. So it was good, good experience. Absolutely good. Wow, the, how nice to hear. Very thankful to IIT that they provide such kind of facilities. Okay, so these are good stories not many people talk about, isn't it? Very good. I really never felt that much uh, love from <laughs> my family. Good, also. okay. Excellent, excellent. Okay. Anyone else wants to share? Please feel share uh, to share these things. Say something. <laughs> yeah. Are there any staff members here? Yeah, yeah, they're there. Okay. How do you feel that the staff situation is? Do you think that there is, you know, welfare being catered for, especially on these mental and, you know, all these other psychological sides? Yes, please. Uh, so I'm an educator for some mathematics. Uh, so the Faculty of Science is here. So I have completed 22 years. So I realized when a new faculty or staff member joins, uh, sometimes due to their uh, original emotional uh, maturity, mm. Yes. Uh, things like that. But at times, I keep hearing from many faculty members or staff who are new uh -huh. from various other parts of the country. Uh, they are a bit lost, so they, they ask for uh, what kind of uh, I mean, uh, a uh, hierarchy plan because they are hesitant to contact the uh, head uh -huh. of the department sometimes, they are hesitant to contact the dean. Yeah. Because some are academic, but uh, some are non-academic. Mm. Uh, they are basically to the settlement on the campus. So this well-being. Uh, we but why do you, why do you think that is? If you analyze it, why are they an anxious about it? Is it because it's not widely made known that they can get help for something, or that the support s system yeah, is not be, there? Uh, yeah, you need so to look at these things. You know, yeah. That's what, uh, yeah. We, we are lucky. We have a booklet. We have upload on. Okay. That. Well, this is for, you know, the management here to take on board. You need to look at these things to support it. Yeah. I hope this will lead to some results. Many of these workshops, 
it's all very well to discuss and talk about it, but then once you leave the room, nothing ever gets done. That is not how things should be. You should act on these things to improve it. Otherwise, there's no point in us sharing this workshop. So do come and uh, f give feedback and make results happen. Um, now, I don't want to touch on this suicide thing, but you cannot ignore it. It happens, and as I say, it should not happen. Let us have a discussion. Why do you think it is happening? You know, I think there is pressure. There's personal thing. We cannot analyze the mindset of some of these people. But why should it happen? How can you stop it? You know, can we have some ideas among you? Do you ever discuss it in the campus more widely? Not just on social media. <laughs> Let us have some discussion on this. Let's not stay quiet. Don't feel shy, come on. Let us hear the students. Yes, yes. Come on, you. You happy here? Uh. No, no, he's not happy. <laughs> <laughs> we should, uh, he's just, okay. Uh, no, but uh, you tell us the uh, food, food uh, whether you are getting food or not, and what sort of food you require. So let him, uh, don't worry. He, we just he wants to discuss what are the things we can do, how things can happen. Take it in a positive sense, not that yeah. people will keep. We are not trying to <laughs> make inquisition. We are trying to contribute to make things happen positively to prevent things like this, you know. Yeah. Come on, some of you ladies. Why do you think, can you get into the mindset of these students who are finding depression and all that? Um, I would like to uh, say that I think in these situations are very complicated environment. Yeah, sure. Yes, sir. And since we are far away from home, and uh, although we are digitally connected, still we are not connected in the real sense. How many times we have heart to heart conversations with our friends or even family members? Mm. And added to the pressure, paper publication, going to seminars, doing awards. So, all these things at the same time can be pressurized. Uh, our campus has a lot of facilities where uh, students can go and connect uh, with counselors and everything. Uh, but Is there? Oh, good. Yeah, yeah, oh. we have. Mm. But uh, so I would say I think that uh, the campus is providing the institute is providing every facility. But on our part, uh, we find it difficult to initiate that conversation. I see. That we I are see. Going through a difficult time. Yeah, Rather it is always difficult. It's, it's always, always difficult. difficult. Like, there is always stigma with mental health and all those yes. things. So we feel what if we say and how that will be, you know, taken from mm. uh, from other yes. people's perspective. So. Uh, in this situation, I feel it's very important that we connect and improve our social resources so that okay. we can connect with other people, mm. maybe um, with other students, seniors, so that we don't feel lonely in this mm. uh, environment as we all are away from home and we are trying to adjust to these things. Mm. So. Perhaps you should have like a motherly figure. I don't want to be sexist, you know, <laughs> like a motherly figure you can approach, whether boys and girls or even staff can approach them, find, seek out that person, employ that person so that they can act in this role. You know, it's never too late to, to start doing that. Um, something which appears to me as an outsider is that usually in Indian society, and in, in fact in most Asian societies, the parental pressure, family pressure is very strong. They expect you to do well. Like even in the UK, people of Indian origin, unless their children are engineers, lawyers, or doctors, they don't succeed in life. You know, if you become an actor, forget it, you're third class. <laughs> so there is always this pressure, pressure on the children that they've got to do these things. 
And I feel that plays a very important part. And perhaps the parents themselves should be educated into that mindset so that they do not put the pressure on the students. I don't know how you do it. Perhaps you can make a discussion. Come on, some of you are parents here. Come, can you say something, you know? What do you feel? Sir, come on, say something, please. <laughs> Stand up and say something, please. What do you think? How can you educate parents to do this? Say something, yes. Please say something. Okay, good. So what do you do here, sir? I'm, I'm doing the package related Okay, to how nice. The good. Yeah. Now, for instance, if I can ask, I don't know if anyone is here involved in student welfare. Uh, I hate coming back to this. When there is a suicide, do you people analyze what was the causes, you know, and learn from it? You know, they're all case studies that can be learned and you know, learned lessons from that, you know. Is that being done or not? You, can someone say? Yes. Sir, I think that the students in our region, uh, we are moving towards the development. Uh, sir, I am Kumar Kumar Singh from the Council. Oh. Uh, in present scenario, when we are developing, uh, going to become a developed nation, and sir, I think you are from uh, UK. Yes. Pressure. Pressure of uh, that money and uh, mm. those things. And developed nation that did not can cannot learn that thing which are actually being faced by the less developed mm. or those uh, developing uh, nations. Yes. I think the boys who are coming from uh, poor family. Adequate, adequate uh, oh, higher family. Yes. Mm. We have not faced earlier, and because uh, they have not faced the difficulties in their life, in their time, they are not seeing their families to uh, learn those difficulties. Mm. If they see difficulties in their life uh, afterwards, they are not able to sustain those difficulties, and they face some suicide and suicide. Okay. And uh, I think that bas the basic uh, thing in life is. Mm. 
Any other thoughts on that? Please join the discussion to make it more meaningful. You are all very quiet, come on. <laughs> yes. Yes, yeah, sure. But one thing is that the pressure and uh, always thinking that what should I do without this or that? If I don't get this one, so what should I do? What others people will say? Like uh, if I will not achieve this one or if I fail on Social this pressure. One, Uh, peer pressure, yes. we call it peer that pressure. pressure. Also, mm. The main effect for doing such kind of uh, thesis. Okay. So, sir, uh, as you said, that uh, everyone is not uh, introvert, everyone is not extrovert. Yes. And it is very difficult if you are not want to say something to others, they will automatically read your mind. Yes. It's always a possible. Mm. Yeah, sure. Yes. So that's, that's yeah. Yeah. Among staff members, I don't know how many staff members are here, so we don't often talk about staff. You know, do they approach, you know, management about problems like that, or is it? <laughs> yeah, they don't approach directly, but indirectly when we get some information oh. about their family, they think or yeah. they are, we do come into picture, but uh, yes, there is a problem with the staff. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes. You said if you see the society is gradually changing. Yes. Because when we were young, at that time our playground was like kind of everything to us. So oh. I can recall that after coming back from school, I would throw my bag <laughs> and I would run to the playground before the team is getting formed for the soccer oh. match. Oh. Because sitting in the sideline is a worst depression for me during that time. <laughs> but today when I see my daughter, oh. she is more towards the social media and what social media is influencing her. Oh. So her mood keeps on varying depending upon oh. what her friend told in the social media. I know. I know. And she will take less food in the dinner if she feels depressed. So I personally think that digitization has got a lot of benefits. Social media has also got a lot of benefits. Oh, yes. At the same time, it came up with some things which we need to uh, also balance and manage. Yes. Uh, so uh, I think the parents are the first mentors oh. uh, in the family who should give more time to the That's uh, right. children to make them uh, aware of the good things and the bad things yeah. of the social media and accept the positive aspect mm. of the social media without getting influenced by other happenings. Mm. And uh, that is something which I feel uh, as a family man also, mm. uh, seeing my daughter. That uh, social media has a lot of impact, and we as a parents 
as uh, our role to play to make them convince the good part and the bad part. Mm. Yes, I, th I think that is a worldwide problem because only in the last month in the UK, they were trying to introduce legislation to control social media because some of these young girls, anorexia, you know, not eating, that is a very big problem. Uh, and that is purely from social media. They see this and then self-harm. They're committing suicide, self-harm. 14, 15-year-old girls. And this is all just from watching social media. You know, people are saying that you can kill yourself and this and that. So, so there are bad parts to that. So although we are in this institute where we promote all these savvy techno uh, innovations and all that, there's a bad side to it or harmful side to it. So, and we should be aware of it. Uh, are there any other topics that I touched on which you feel we should uh, uh, discuss. Some of you are not interacting enough. Come on, <laughs> I don't believe you're all so shy. <laughs> no, they are not so shy. I think <laughs> that, uh, possibly the topic like this is very difficult to talk on that. Yeah, uh, it's a huge topic. It's a huge topic. Huge topic yeah. yeah, but you cannot avoid it. Of the family, yeah. Uh, even on the dining table, people are looking at husband and wife. They are also looking at their. Uh, <laughs> Uh, okay. Uh, the young friends from uh, foreign countries, we have about, I think, 63 friends. How many? 63. 63. 63. 63. 63. 63. 63. 63. 63. 63. 63. 63. 63. 63. 63. 63. 63. 63. 63. 63. 63. 63. 63. 63. 63. 63. 63. 63. 63. 63. 63. 63. 63. 63. 63. 63. 63. 63. 63. 63. 63. 63. 63. 63. 63. 63. 63. 63. 63. 63. 63. 63. 63. 63. 63. 63. Who has a problem in the hospital, she went to hospital. Yeah, no, 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 yeah. Mm. So, no, see, he never told us, but when I, I used to ask in the class, right, oh. first class, and I used to ask, you are fine? Yes, I am fine. Mm. But she has problem. So, anyway, so I think we are uh, not in a position to talk to them very well. Or mm. the language, maybe, I don't know. Yeah. Okay, but I think that uh, let us meet them every yeah. month. I have told my head that at least we should, and uh, I think. Uh, mm. Like today's workshop, yeah. uh, tell me honestly, have you done anything like this before about wholeness, no, well-being? We have, we have not uh, done anything. You we should do. Problem. Now you yes. realize we need yes. to do. Yes. You need to do something like that. Have it a regular yes. system. Yes, happiness center here. Yes, good. So good. that lectures have been even during COVID time. Yes. We asked them and the whole campus was seeing. We have yes. done good, like good, very that good. For yes. The students yes. Good, yes, yes. Yeah. Oh, that. good, very good. This is not that this way we have not done just in yeah. a like that, but we have. Maybe have a regular, yeah, like yeah, once a month or something, a wellness time. wellness workshop, yeah. regular thing, yeah. institute, things like that. Don't you agree? You know, otherwise, if you don't interact, it will not happen. Yeah, in you in need to do these uh, things. When it was locked down, I think uh, my full staff of director, deputy director, mm. wardens, deans, we went to each hall. Oh. Each hall, every 15 days, we go to them. Yeah. Uh, on 24th yeah. of March 2020. So 
So yeah. we're going to each hall and then trying to tell that, okay, life is different, yeah. don't worry, don't read, yeah. but um, have some music, learn music, yeah. new, uh, learn dance, this, that. We were trying to put yeah. them and uh, luckily nothing happened. Mm. And we could keep our students very happy during that period of mm. four months or so. Mm. So we have been doing that. Yeah. And uh, it's not that we are not doing, we are doing even some of the ladies uh, who are from the counseling center, we had lectures with them mm. for the campus ladies yeah. because everybody was locked the, during that period. Mm. Uh, but students problem, large number of students, you have touched the point very nicely that uh, I'm best in my school. But when I come, he's also best in his school. He's also best mm. in his school. She's also best in uh, her yeah. school. So everybody is best. Uh -huh. So you said that everybody is good here. Uh -huh. So best among the best. Uh -huh. So you have to differently. And then you are feeling, Are oh, I'm lost in the class. <laughs> in the and, uh, how he's doing bad. So the parent thinks like uh -huh. this. But parents, I have been telling in my lectures to the parents, uh -huh. that don't think that your son, he was in school there. Now he's a university where all are first. Mm. All parents you know, come that my son is first, my daughter is first mm. in the school, she has come here. Mm. So there is high competition. Yeah. Only thing we have to understand that we remain within yourself. And you rightly said, somebody will be first. Only mm. one person will be first. Yeah. So somebody has to be there in the Someone has to be lost. <laughs> right. And that doesn't mean that uh, the person who is 125, he is here, he says 120. <laughs> 125, she is alive. He has seen the life. That's no. Take it easy. You will do something or be like. You should be clear in mind. I know one of our students, he was he was very good, but he left after second year because he's oh. late. And you know, he used to design the satellites in those 75, 76. Oh. Yeah, yes. And uh, he started making business out of that. And mm. he's still there. He did BSc from somewhere just for the sake of it. He went there. He was number one in, uh, in the world, in the country on mathematics. Oh. But nothing else he was doing. So that way I can tell you yeah. that he's here, everybody has something unique. I told mm. the student that you are Lakhome. That means 30 lakh people you have come here. You have something different than anybody. Yeah. Try to you know, try to find out that yeah. point. Positivity. That is what exactly yeah. is, uh, Peter is trying to say. That you have everything. We are not uh, analyzing that part of it. See, even foreign students who have come here, they are different. That's why they have been chosen here. We had about a large number, I think, in, uh, Anybody will tell us several candidates, but out of that, some 63 people have been picked oh. up and all that interview was there. Oh. So you have been picked up after a lot of discussion. Mm. So you must know that you are something different than others. So you should uh, leverage that and think that, yes, I can do something. That is what you are mm. trying to tell yes. to the one which is Okay. Okay, so the, I think who is organizing the devices? Are we having a little break or yeah, yeah. Uh, whatever? And what is the next session? Five minutes break. And next session is, is I think you are to continue on the same holiness and con well being of students, staff, employees, student, uh, residents of Ivy Corps. Yeah. Yeah. And think. how to improve life of campus community. Okay, do you want to go into the nitty gritty? Do you think as you want to participate more? I don't want to force it on you. You know, you feel it is useful to continue discussion or do you think? Sir, we'd like to know Okay, I will give a talk on bonsai, then I can tell you about my life and we'll have it so it's not boring to you. So second session, I'm going to tell you about bonsai. So yes. remain behind, we're going to have a short break now. Yes, I, I hope you've enjoyed this discussion. As I say, this is a workshop. Please feel free uh, to participate in future ones. And as I say, I hope something positive will come from this session. And then you people will implement something that I have sparked off that it can benefit everyone. As I say, I'm not a techie guru. I'm not a chief of Google or chief of this and that. I'm only a humble Mali, but I hope a little contribution I can make will improve the life and well-being of students and staff and other support staff on the campus. Yeah, you're okay. Okay. All right. You please feel free. You can come and Talk to me if you didn't want to speak in public. You can come and talk. I'm available. I won't eat you up. <laughs> yes. 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 
There you are, you have all these wonderful ideas, you know, you should act on it, you know, make use of it. Yeah, no, really. really. I think the most important help is self help. Yes. Thank you. Great. Yeah, please. Okay, okay, thank you. And these are some good suggestions. Yeah, I hope this has been useful. You find it has been useful today, so far, this session? Mm. Power, power means what? We need to feel empowered from inward. Yeah. And your lackness is external thing again influencing in power, uh, like inward. So I was uh, talking to my school teacher. I used to tell sir that is trying to pose some threat to the society. Who said? Who said? <laughs> I stopped. Then I thought, yeah, it's me. I'm speaking to you, my teacher. Where did you see? Uh, I thought there. No, where did you see? So it, it triggered some question. Oh, so where is the vision system? So it's in my brain. Oh, I saw in my brain. So the perception, so everything is inward. So you should be internally awakened and with so enlightened. So you're good. So you'll have a lot of such topics. Okay, good. Uh, very topic. good. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Uh, I will request all of you to get back and let us give a big hand to Peter. Also, thanks to Professor Tiwari for having some time. Spending so your valuable time. Thank you. Thank you for spending your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
sorry about the delay. <laughs> My technology is not compatible. They gone home. They gone back to the. <laughs> this is about my life history. This next one, you'll find it interesting. Are there any more outside? No, they are not. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. Shall I start? So welcome to this one. Some of you asked me to do a presentation which is not related to the other workshop. So this one is just a diversion really because we are going to talk about something about bonsai and this is something about myself. You notice that the date October of last year 2021 I did this as a presentation to the IIT alumni group in America. So I shared it with them so you will find it interesting, I hope. Some of you may know that I have a Chinese face, but it doesn't mean I'm Chinese. I don't consider myself Chinese. In fact, the title Strangers in a Foreign Land. Nowadays, in America and Europe, there are so many people of Indian origin, second and third generation Indians. They are feeling probably what I felt when I was in India back in my childhood days. They don't believe belong to India, but they are also like strangers in a foreign land. So what I experienced in my childhood, these people are now experiencing in Europe and America. So it may be relevant to them. 
This is a picture of my grandfather and mother on my father's side. And my grandfather was a classic entrepreneur. He emigrated from China in Guangdong, southern China, to India in the days of the British Raj in 1890. He was only 19 years old at the time. So he came and he apprenticed himself to a Chinese firm of carpenters. So like in India, there are many different uh, uh, communities like Gujarati, Bengali, Punjabis. So in China, there's a vast, vast community of different uh, uh, groups. So we are Cantonese from Guangdao's. And the Cantonese people are mainly carpenters and restaurant people. So because they were carpenters, he apprenticed himself to a company of uh, carpenters. And after about seven years, he learned enough to go back to China. He brought two brothers. He had four other brothers. There are five brothers in the family. He brought two other brothers from China to start a company in Calcutta. And this is my grandparents on the mother's side. He was the first Christian minister in Hong Kong in British days. Again, he was born in the 19th century, 1890s or so. But I didn't have much chance to see my grandparents on the maternal side because they never left Hong Kong. This is a picture in Calcutta around the, I would say, Chandni Chok area. And my grandfather, you see that word over there, theater, you can just about make out, he's riding a bicycle. He started the first ever theater in Chandni Chok, where they used to bring, see, can you see? Chinese theater. They used to bring all these performers from China to perform theater in Calcutta. They were so rich, my grandfather was so rich, he could do all that. And this is the inside of the theater. These are some old photographs I managed to dig out. So this is again, I think 1900, 1910 in Calcutta. So these are very historical pictures. And this is a picture of uh, the railway coaches. My grandfather started a factory in Tangra in Dhapa, and they were making at the peak of their business in the 1911, 120, they were producing like 30 to 33 coaches like this a month. So it was a big operation. They employed like 2,000 people. And they were very rich because they were obviously doing well. And they were so rich that my, my father, the son of my grandfather, was able to apply to go to the very famous engineering school called the Milwaukee School of Engineering. You see the address, 45 Dharamtala uh, Street. Uh, so he wrote this letter to yeah, MSOE to see. That was a company, Kathy Hing Brothers. Yeah, Dharamtala Street. Dharamtala. Yeah. So you see the date? 1928, Milwaukee. So he applied to go to the Milwaukee School of Engineering, which is still there, quite a famous school now in Chicago. So that's the full letter. He had the initiative to write to them to apply for application there. So by that time, he had already married my mother. My mother was only 16 years old. In those days, they married young. Brought her from Hong Kong. And when he went for four years to United States, he didn't see my mother for four years after getting married. So that was the life. You know, he spent four years in America studying electrical engineering. And I managed to see this, this Ellis Island, all these documents I managed to find. And this is a picture, one of the few pictures of my father in this factory that we had in Dhapa, in Tangra, where they were producing these railway wagons and carriages. That's a picture of my mother and father taken in Calcutta. My mother must have been only like 16, 20 years old then. And that's a picture of my mother. It's a picture of my mother and father. 
So this is a picture of him on route from Calcutta all the way to America. So can you imagine the ship's journey from Calcutta to England must have taken like two months, six weeks or two months, and then from Liverpool on the west coast of the UK to America took another two weeks or so. So it was a long journey. It took about two, three months to travel from India to, yeah, by sea in those days. No flying, not few hours, it took months. So he was very savvy because my grandfather's side was very rich and they, he could send my father to America. So these old pictures, see him in America. Like I would go to IIT, he went to this famous school in America to study engineering. One of the few pictures I have of him. And that is him in the study in the Milwaukee School of Engineering. Quite savvy guy. And about 20 years back, I took on myself the initiative to write to the Milwaukee School of Engineering. And you won't believe it, they have all his academic record when he was studying in MSOE. They could find out, look at all the maths, the marks he got. Going back to 1928. <laughs> I don't know whether IT keeps these records. But they managed to find the records to me and send it to me. And this is the piece of paper. That was the qualification he got. And this is one of the very few pictures of our family. The lady standing in the back is our cousin. She's much older than us. But my father and mother and we had five children in the family, so that baby on my mother's lap is me, maybe about six months old. I have four sisters. And this is a picture of me when I was maybe about three years old during the Second World War. And that's a picture of my grandfather. He was the person who started the company, Katie Hing and Company. And these are my four sisters. This is a house in Tangra, it was used, that road was called Chingrihata Road. It is now called DC Day Road. They changed the name. Chingrihata, I don't know what I meant, Chingrihata. Oh, is it? Oh, okay. So that is it. We had a family house there. And that's a picture of my mother with the five children. And then this must have been taken in Victoria Memorial, my mother with ourselves. Sadly, I will tell you something. During the Calcutta riots of 1947, my father got accidentally killed. We still don't know. No one ever found his body. He died in the Calcutta riots. So from the age of six and a half, I was fatherless. So my poor mother had to bring up five children on her own. What happened was that because my father qualified as an electrical engineer, he didn't want to know anything to do with the family business. He considers himself too technic, uh, technical advanced to work in a carpentry factory. So he joined all these British companies like Barma Lorry and GC and all that to work for them. So he did not have anything to do with the family business. And when he died, the family did not want to know us because we had divorced ourselves from the family. So my poor mother had to bring up the five children on her own and the family disowned us. So that is a sad part of my life. So we were not exactly rich, you know. We are not exactly poor, but we were not rich. We did not have the family's wealth behind us to support us. So my mother had a tough time. So I went to the Calcutta Boys School, which is an American Methodist school. I had to pay, I think, like 15 rupees a month in those days. But my four sisters went to the Calcutta Girls School as free scholars because we were Christian people. So the Methodist mission gave them free schooling there, which of course are very good schools. So we lived in Waverley Mansions next to the Calcutta Boys School and that's, and the background is St. Theresa's Church. You know that yeah. church there? This of course is my sister's family. She married into another company. Now I wrote an article, I will send it to you, the IIT archives one of these days. This gentleman on the left hand side, his name was Ashish Nandi. I wrote an article about him because 
I don't think the Gymkhana man is here. He was not Gymkhana president, but he was a guy in IIT who could get anything done. If you wanted anything done, ask Ashish Nandi. Flick of a finger, he will get it done. He is that such a, in every society you will get that. You know, a chap who can make everything happen. But because he was so involved with the extracurricular activities, he was the first student in IIT ever to fail the second year. He had to spend one extra year. They detained him. They kept him back for a second year to repeat a second year because he was always spending time in the gym car. He failed all his exams. But he was my best friend. He lived in CIT Road, which is just off Entali, and I lived in SN Banerjee Road. So during the holiday, we used to come and spend time together. So that is Ashish Nandi, Mr. Fixit. Another little story I will tell you about Ashish Nandi. Because I was a champion cyclist, he tried to emulate whatever I did. So he tried to ride bicycle. But as you can see, he was a very big guy. Sadly, Ashish Nandi died in 1995 at the age of 55 because he had diabetes. He put on too much weight. But even in the college days, he was quite a big made guy. And during our second year, we decided to go to Diga, which was uh, about 80 miles. I could do it in six hours on my bike. Of course, those roads in the 50s and 60s yeah. didn't exist, so it was terrible. So we decided after the Saturday lectures, we used to have lectures till about 12 o'clock, and the afternoon was free. So we decided to go to Diga. Of course, Ashish Nandi, being Mr. Fixit, he got some pieces of bread, and he asked the mess manager to give him 10 hard-boiled duck's eggs, Askanda. <laughs> and that was the food, which he kept with him. And I rode my bike, he rode this bike. But because he was so slow, I left him behind. I got to Diga by about 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock in the evening. But meanwhile, after about 20 miles, he took a bus. He couldn't ride anymore. He took a bus all the way to Diga. So he reached at about 10 o'clock at night. I reached there about 6, 7 o'clock. But meanwhile, he carried all the 10 eggs and bread. He ate them all, and I didn't eat anything. <laughs> so that is my famous Diga trip. <laughs> so Mr. Fixit, he could do anything. So, but that is the story of Ashish Nandi. This is a rare picture of me receiving my uh, degree from Dr. Sen Gupta. He was one of the most illustrious of the directors of IIT, a very stern person. No one ever dared to approach him, you know. You couldn't approach him. SR, SR Sen Gupta. And of course, this picture was taken by who else? Mr. Nandi, because he was one year behind, so he took this picture of me. Otherwise, I would have never captured this picture it's of me. On the right side, I think. Yes. <laughs> and this is a picture in front of RK Hall. In 1963, after I graduated, I don't know whether your history goes back, 62, 63, there was an India-China war. You may have read in the history. And India got badly beaten by the Chinese. So Nehru decided to intern all the Chinese, which are mainly in Calcutta. In those days, there were like 40,000 Calcutta Chinese. And they were all sent to prison camp in Deoli in Rajasthan. I luckily escaped because my mother had British passport. So we were able to get out of India. And after I graduated in 62, for one year, no one employed me because you were the Chinese face and in the China war, who would give you a job? So I didn't get a job after graduating. So I had a very tough time. One complete year, I did nothing. I did nothing. So I used to visit the campus. In fact, bless his soul, the head of department, Professor Menon, offered me, he said, you come and be assistant lecturer in electrical engineering department. But I declined. I didn't take it up. And this is a picture taken in 63 after I graduated because all these guys who stayed behind were doing the m -tech. So there's another Chinese boy there called um, Charles Chang. So I still remember their name. This is fellows called Tejban Gupta. He's still around in Delhi. And this Saran, he's a professor in um, Missouri University in America. Uh, Mr. Bhargav, he died. He became the general manager of GC in Calcutta. But he was killed in a road rage accident in America about 10 years ago. So he had a very unfortunate uh, uh, experience. I'll tell you something about Mr. Manmohan Bhargav. He spent all his life in GC as the manager. He didn't leave India. But when he retired at the age of 58, I think in 
India, they retire at 58, before 60. And his son, meanwhile, now he had another very interesting story because Manmohan Bhargav, he was, I think, in room uh, 301 or 302 C in RK Hall. His son also entered IIT and his son also went to RK Hall and he also occupied the same room as his father. Can you imagine? He asked for it. So there's a full circle, but his son did very well. He went on to Las Vegas to become some consultant or something. So he took Manmohan after his retirement back to the United States. Not only that, the IIT connection was so strong that Manmohan Bhargav, because he was an expert in heavy electrical machines, he could design all these big motors and all. And the US needed someone to do this because that expertise was not there in America in about 20 years back. There was no expertise. And one of our other colleagues from electrical engine department, I think his name is uh, uh, Swaran Singh Kalsi. He became a, what you call it, superconductivity expert in America. And because of his expertise, I shouldn't be telling you this, uh, they were doing some research into using superconductivity for these large electrical machines to use in submarines and all that. So he was brought over to the United States to help design that. So he went to America after retirement and he became quite rich doing that. Whereas when he stayed behind in India, he didn't advance very much beyond becoming the general manager of GC. So that is the story of Manmohan Bhargav. So all our colleagues have done well. And not only that, I represented West Bengal. I was the West Bengal cycling champion for about four years, undisputed champion. I was junior champion and senior champion. But one of my greatest regrets is because when you're in IIT, you can't spend time doing too much cycling. So all the national championships, I could not join because it always coincided with the end of term exams in about March when the national championships took place. This picture was taken in 63 after I finished IIT because I was spending all my time cycling. I was undisputed champion in West Bengal. I even went on to the nationals, but my mind was not on it because of the India-China war. So that is my claim to fame. In IIT, I was famous only as a cyclist, nothing else. My studies was bad. These are a group of Christian boys. Someone was talking about uh, the spirituality. In the Fourth Avenue, there is a Baptist church. It's there still today. And all these Christian boys, the Naga boys were Christians. Some of the South Indians were Christians. And uh, the top I was telling you about here is Mr. Cornelius. Sadly, he's got dementia now. We used to go to attend the Baptist church in Fourth Avenue. So that was our social life here. We used to attend the church. Again, when we left India, we had to get clearance that we didn't owe any tax before we left India. And I don't know whether they still do this now, but when we graduated, there was this souvenir book where, no, sorry, in, they recorded everyone's achievements in that book. And I believe a lot of the parents used to get this just to look for prospective grooms for their daughters. Can you believe it? <laughs> Who was the most eligible? But the entry here is quite accurate. Most of these entries are very accurate. This is electrical engineering department. He became the Southeast uh, Railways general manager. He also became the Eastern Railway manager, uh, R.P. Srivastava. Uh, Sushil Kapoor, he went on to become a banker in the United States. I don't know what happened to him. This is Manmohan Bhargav. Tejban Gupta, he's still around in Delhi. Uh, and the entry for me says, I'll read it to you in case you can't read it. It says, quiet and handsome, Peter Chan is uh, known all over Bengal for his cycling. He got the Institute Blue for cycling and also has a, is also a wonderful speaker, which hopefully I still am. Um, he will always be remembered. He showed some artistic skills. His room, his room, his room still bears testament to.
to his artistic skill. I used to draw in my room. I tell you something about my time in IIT. When I joined IIT, I felt I had chosen the wrong option. I took up electrical engineering because my father was electrical engineering. I remember in those days, you had to clear a final interview. After passing the entrance exam, you had to come here for final exam uh, interview. If you didn't pass the interview, you had to go back. If people came from the South, they had to go all the way back to South India. So in the final interview, Professor Seth, who was very famous for his maths, he was head of mathematics. I remember him asking me, why do you want to become an electrical engineer? I said, because my father was one. He said, that's the worst answer you could have given. <laughs> I thought I couldn't get it because I gave the wrong answer. But throughout my career in IIT, I realized I had chosen the wrong option. But I couldn't switch. They said, once you've chosen, too bad, you can't switch. I should have become an architect because I'm an artistic person by uh, inclination. You know, my talents lie in that direction. But hopefully in life, I ended up being a landscape architect, self-taught landscape architect. I designed very, very expensive and prestigious uh, Japanese gardens for very rich clients in the Sanyal. He was like the granddad of the campus. Everyone loved him. A very loved, well-loved person. And you know who that is? Ravi Shankar. I've met him several times because the family I stay with in Calcutta, the Sri Ram family, he used to live in their house, you know, Ravi Shankar. When in the days before he was famous. And he came to attend one of my bonsai demonstrations in Calcutta. This is back in, I think, 1999, this picture was taken. This is a picture of me with my wife. I think I told you, I'm, did I tell you in the other talk? When I was 20 years old in 1960, my wife was my pen friend. You know what pen friend is? In those days, you used to correspond with people by letter. I think I brought one or two letters still. I used to write to her from my room in 228C, RK Hall, to her, and she used to write back. So I think I have a record of 39 letters, which she kept every single one, but I didn't keep her letters because I was traveling all over the world. Somehow I either lost them or destroyed them. So she kept every single letter. And when I went to England in 63, I met her, and then after about two years, I did get married. And these are children. I tell you another story. I don't think I've got the photograph here. But I brought my daughter. That was my daughter just now. <coughs> this is when she was aged, I think, one and a half or two years old. In 1995, I brought my daughter here. And I showed her room 228C, where I wrote my letters from. And I told her that had I not written letters from that room, she would not be born. And the guy who occupied that room, sat us down at the desk, same old steel desk, and I wrote the letters again, and they posted it to my wife back in England again. And I don't know whether you ever saw the film called Back to the Future. You know, there's a movie called Back to the Future. And in that movie, it says, had I not done this, that would not have happened. Had I not done something else, that would not have happened. So, and I don't want to drop names, but at that time, she was the president of Queen's College in Cambridge. She went to Cambridge. So she was quite impressed with the IIT campus because she didn't look at the infrastructure so much as the people. She could sense that the IIT uh, community had some, uh, what do you call it, a tempo in them. So she was well impressed, despite the physical infrastructure did not compare with uh, those in Cambridge University. And this is when I was doing my bonsai hobby. My children were like 8 and 10 years old, and I was developing bonsai. This is not a story real about bonsai. This is a story about my life. And yeah. So I'm self-taught bonsai. In those days, in the 60s and 70s, there was very little information about bonsai. All you could find was picture books of what bonsai trees look like. So with my inquiring mind, I figured out if you do certain things to certain plants, how you can make it into this shape, that shape, how you can make the plants grow. So 
In my bonsai career, I've written nine books. If you can include the latest one, which was published this year, is 10 books. All these books are the results of my experiments in bonsai. So it is all self-taught. I don't claim to be a Japanese master or been to Japan to learn or been to China to learn. Everything I figured out by deduction. If you have a scientific mind, if you have an inquiring mind, you can figure these things out. Believe you me, you can figure these things out. Don't be put off. Nothing is impossible. This, ah, this is the famous visit. My daughter at that time, 1995. I think this was the guy who occupied room 228C. And uh, that was me, picture taken in 1995. I looked much younger then. <laughs> I still had all that hair. And this is in RK Hall. And they made us write <laughs> the letter. This is a picture in 1995. And when I come to India, I always seek out my grandfather's grave in Tangra and Dhapa. There is Chinese cemetery. I always go to see my grandparents' graves because we respect our forebears. Even my grand, my daughter, she is very sentimental. She likes to seek out her roots, her origins. And this is the house where I was born, 37 Chingri Hata Road. It had become like a shampoo factory or something. But it's completely different, you know, not the same anymore. I dare say if I go there, it must be a multi-story building now, isn't it? It doesn't exist. This picture was taken, I think, 2005. And I even went, this is a picture in statesman office. I believe they sold the statesman building now, Very recently. recently. But my host, the Sri Ram family, knew Mr. Irani, who was the editor or the owner of the paper. So he very kindly allowed me to seek out the archives. And around the date when, I think around 25th April, there was an entry in the statesman that my father had died, you know, just the entry. But they never found the body. So that is the story of my life. And this is in us, the Chinese cemetery on that visit. I think this was 2007 when I came with my daughter. And this is me in RK Hall. I think this was a visit maybe 2005 or 2007, reminiscent outside RKO. This is my daughter. She is very much into diversity. She worked in television industry for a long, long time. And now she sits on the boards of different companies. My son is completely different. Although my son is two years older than my daughter, he is a graphic designer, but he is what we call laid back. He's not as competitive as my daughter. My daughter follows after me, but they are each different. You know, everyone is different in their own way. So, you know, I don't put pressure on any of them. They can achieve what they like. So this is what my daughter does. She was mainly specializing in diversity. You know what diversity is? That means equal rights for women, gays, lesbians, disabled people. And she did a lot in the media industry for television to introduce these diverse people into the media. So if you go to UK and watch the television, you see disabled people presenting, disabled people taking part. You know, maybe, I don't know whether you have in India as well. But sh she was responsible. She was responsible for doing this. So she did some very pioneering work. So to this day, she sits on the boards of different companies, advising them on diversity. So she is diversity expert. See, look at this. So, so most of her career is with diversity. And that's her husband now. And these are the bonsai trees. So she's got, these are twins. These are twin boys and girl twin. But I have another a grandson. I have three grandchildren. And in my bonsai career, I've met the queen about four times different times I've met the queen. And these are our bonsai trees. A tree like that would cost 25,000 pounds, 25 lakhs, that tree. So, no, they are grown, but they're made from old trees. So we, we are using like a plant to create like a, what do you call it, like a sculpture. So you're doing sculpture with trees. This is what bonsai is. Maybe. 
you can graph, but this one is not. This is a natural tree that we have sculpted, sculpted to make into that shape. Yeah, so you take a tree and you create the shapes to become beautiful. So what is bonsai? It is just a tree that is grown in a pot, but people buy it because it's beautiful. They're like supermodels, you know? Like, you know, the supermodels command a very high value because they're beautiful. So bonsai, the value of a tree is not so much the age, but the beauty of the tree. So I have collectors who collect these trees costing up to 45 lakhs for one tree. Yeah, yeah. so this is what my business is about. I think that is the end of this session. I hope I can find another talk about... Shaping yeah, shaping was. So I will tell you more about it. So I hope this is giving you some flavor of my background to show you where I come from and uh, how I got into the bonsai. I have a lot of talks about bonsai. So some of you, if you want to ask some questions, we can have a brief uh, discussion. Some of you, have you got anything you want to ask, either about bonsai, about my life, or life in IIT? Okay, first question is, uh, what made you attracted towards bonsai? Because OK, right. I didn't touch on that. When I went to England, after I got married, I didn't tell you some other thing. I may be talking about it in the presentation to the convocation. When I came to England in 1963, the IIT degree was not recognized because every university has to apply for recognition to the parent body in the UK. And in the UK, there's a thing called the Institution of Electrical Engineers. So they approve all the uh, degrees which are recognized and not recognized. So in 1963, IIT degree, uh, the IIT had not applied for recognition. So when I went to England and asked for a job, they asked me, where did you gradu graduate from? I said, IIT. I said, what is IIT? I said, in Indian Institute of Technology. So they said, is it a university? I said, no, it's not a university. So what is it? This, I said, it's an institute of national importance. So they said, it's not a university. So they said, it is like Calcutta University failed. It was so bad. It was like just passing your 11 plus exam. So I had to start all over again. They said, if you want to be an engineer, you have to do all the IE exams again. That means start from year one to year four to pass the exams to be qualified. That I was not prepared to do. Meanwhile, I had to fend for myself. When I went to England, I only had like three pounds in my pocket, you know. I had to get a job. And the only job I could get was to be electrician, mystery, you know, electrician with the uh, electricity supply company. And of course, while I was working there, I managed to solve some problems which were technical problems. So the people could see that I could do the job. And then, you know, the English people have a sense of fair play. You understand what fair play is. Although they, there is some racial discrimination, there was a sense of fair play. And the fair play means that they could see that I could do the job. So they said, to hell with it. It doesn't matter whether he's got a degree or not. If he can do the job, we'll promote him. So my boss, he promoted me. And by the time I was 33, 34, I became a senior engineer, a job which people, local people didn't get till they were 58 or so or 60 years old. So obviously, they could recognize something. But meanwhile, I think in 1967, after four years, the IIT had applied to the Institution of Electrical Engineers, and the degree was recognized. But by that time, it didn't matter. They could see that I could do the job. So that was another tough time I had. I had a lot of tough time. Uh, and the, how I came into bonsai was that when I got married in 1966, I was 26 years old, and I always used to have a lot of hobbies. One thing I will tell you is that many, I was talking to our colleague here just now, Indian men, they don't have many hobbies. They like watching sport, then they do not do sport. In, in India, most of the bonsai are done by women. In Japan, 99% of the bonsai are done by men. In the United States, I would say about 70% men, 30% women. Also in the UK, proportion of men to women engaging in bonsai is like that. 70% men, 30% women. In India, it is 99% women and 1% men. And the women who do it are all these rich ladies. They are very rich. They say, I've got a more expensive bonsai than you, you know. 
So it is like that, the men don't do it. When I do bonsai demonstrations in India, all these rich ladies tell the Mali, say, Peter Sarab ka dekho kya karta hai, you know, because when I go, the Mali has to do it. They will not do it. They will not do it. They will never learn. <laughs> so uh, what I'm trying to pass on is that men in this country do not have hobbies. Usually these engineers who go abroad, they have a great difficulty. Yes, sir. Is it? Oh, Bombay as well. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, no, I think there's still a lot of women. The majority is women. Culture. Status symbol? Vastu? Yeah. Oh. 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 You think so? Okay. Oh. Okay. All right. Yes. Oh. Marketing, marketing trick. <laughs> Uh, green bamboo, yes. Yeah. If it makes you feel well, if you improve your mindset, it's up to you. It does nothing for me. I don't believe in it. But if it works for you, it works for you. Everyone is different. Everyone is different. Small one. Shohin side or Mame size. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. So there you are. So that is about the bonsai. Uh, any other comments you found this? Uh, yes. Yes. Wait till I show you my other bonsai talk. There is more to come. Uh, okay. Uh, this is not mine. This is someone else's. Anyway. So I hope you will find it interesting the next few days when our technology is working, we will talk on some other topics. Okay. Uh, uh, any more questions from you, visitors? Uh, no? Yes. Okay, uh, that's right, yes. Okay, so my first change, this is my third career. Bonsai is my third career. For 10 years, I worked in the electricity industry. That means all this power generation, transmission, distribution. I worked in the electricity industry for 10, 10 years. And then from there, I went to UK Department of Energy. So I was like a senior civil servant. That means r uh, doing energy policy, writing speeches. I worked on offshore oil and gas, nuclear, and all these things. I also wrote speeches for ministers, even the prime minister, you know, the energy policy speeches. Uh, and in the s late 70s, early 80s, Mr. Thatcher was selling off the energy industries and all the nationalized industries. So I had a hand in helping write these privatization speeches for doing that. So that was the second career change. So when I was in the civil service, I think even in this country, if you work in government, that is a job assured for life, isn't it? In England or the UK, they call it cast iron rice bowl. That means that rice bowl will never break. You guaranteed for life, you know, working in government. I think it is here the same, isn't it? Work for government is assured for life. But I hate to say, when I was working in that civil service environment, although I joined as quite a high ranking civil servant, to get hired in the civil service in the UK in those days, in the mid 70s, there was a lot of discrimination, racial discrimination. In the whole of my Department of Energy, 1,500 staff, there were only two ethnic people in the upper management. I and another West Indian fellow. All the other ethnic people were like peons and paper pushers, you know, uh, trolley pushers. So I found that if you wanted to advance in the civil service, British civil service, I was getting nowhere. However good the work you are doing, 
when time for promotion came, you didn't get the promotion. So I could see what was going on. Yeah. So if you went from Oxford and Cambridge in the UK, yeah, like in IIT, you know, they have their own connection. In the UK, they have the connection of your public school or you went to Oxford and Cambridge. You know, that will stand you in good stead. So in the 70s, it is, was very bad. Now, of course, you have an Indian prime minister there and a lot of ethnic people. It's, things have changed completely. My daughter was work, working in diversity. They, things have changed. But in the 70s and 80s, it was very difficult, very difficult. So for that reason, I could see myself getting nowhere. So if I get nowhere, my philosophy in life is that if you come across a barrier or brick wall, don't bang your head against the wall. Just go around the wall. Find another solution to it. So I said to myself, if I'm getting nowhere, let us find something else. But what could I do? How can I change my profession? And at that time, bonsai was only a hobby, just a hobby. It wasn't a job. It was just a hobby. So I said to myself, can I turn the hobby into a business? I said, I can. So for three years, I did what is called a safe strategy. That means I continued to work in the civil service, nine to five job, but I didn't get home sometime till eight o'clock because by the time you did the commuting and all, I didn't get home till eight. And then when I get home, I had to start running my bonsai small business to see how it would take off. And then after three years, I could give up my job completely and then devote myself completely to bonsai. So it was very difficult. For three years, I did two jobs, working as a civil servant and trying to build up the business all by myself. So that was a tough time. So there you are. You can, but I find that in my own case, the training, what IIT teaches you is not how to do mathematical solutions, equations. Even the professors told us, by the time you leave IIT, you'll forget all these things. What it teaches you, and all any teaching institution, teaches you how to find solutions to problems. Engineering is about finding solutions to problems. I have some people who work for me, and whenever you give them a problem, the first thing they will say, at least one person will tell me, oh, it can't be done. Their first reaction, it can't be done. But if you are an engineer, or if my way of thinking is, my immediate reaction is to see how it can be done. Find the solution. So that mindset is very important. So throughout life, if you adopt that mindset, not to find you know, the negative side, find the positive side, how you can get around that problem, how you can get around that problem. So that has been my guiding principle throughout my life. Yes. <laughs> I don't have it on the computer, but at my age, at 82, I, I dance competitively. I dance competitively. Uh, I showed uh, Anirban yesterday a clip of me doing a, it's a modern dance called Expressive. I wish I could show it on the computer. But anyway, throughout my life, I've always said to myself that there is no barrier to age. When I was 55 years old, I couldn't swim a stroke. Cycling was all my life. I was mainly into cycling. I couldn't swim. But my wife used to do aqua aerobics. I don't know whether you have aqua aerobics in this country. You know, the women do exercise in the swimming pool. Yeah, aqua aerobics. So I used to tease her. I said, you know, you ladies are only jumping in the water. You're not actually swimming. She said, why are you laughing at me? You can't even swim at the age of 55. So she said, why don't you come to the pool and learn to swim? So in about six months, I became very good at breaststroke. And became, after one year, I became very good at freestyle. And after 18 months, I learned enough to learn to be a swimming teacher. So I qualified for the first level, level one swimming teacher. After five years, I became level two teacher. That means I can teach swimming for 25 people all on my own. And not only that, I became a swimming coach. I sought out an Olympic swimming coach, and he and I used to go to America to attend World Swimming Coaches Conferences and all that.
to improve other people's swimming. So swimming was my passion from about 1995 to 2020. It was my life. I used to swim seven days a week. Every day I used to swim. And more, one of the reasons why I lost a lot of the hair is the chlorine in the pool caused my hair loss. But that's another story. So I took up swimming at the age of 55 and became very good at it. How I came into dancing was in 2008, my daughter decided to get married. And she said, at my wedding reception, there's going to be dance. So you better learn to dance. So I went and took up some dancing lessons at the age of 68 at that time. And uh, of course, I thought dancing was ball, ballroom dancing. You've probably seen on television, you know, ballroom dancing. So for four years, I learned ballroom dancing. I got quite high in level nine, you know, I took medals and all that. And then I found another dance called Modern Jive and West Coast Swing. And I also danced, you may have heard of Blackpool in the UK. There's a very famous venue called the Blackpool Tower Ballroom. And I attend the UK Jive Championships there as a senior. I've competed in there. I didn't win prizes, but I've competed in the Jive competitions, UK Championship Jive competitions at my old age. And I still do dancing at the age of 82. I enjoy it. So I have a lot of interests and a lot of hobbies. I think that is what keeps me active and keeps me young. So I think it's very important to have a well-rounded and well-balanced life. It is not just sufficient to just be mugging and to just watch television and all that. Unless you have a well-rounded life, well-balanced life, you will not get that mental well-being that I think I have. I enjoy my life. Okay, any other points you want to raise? Can't you do it? Can't you find time? Or is that too much pressure? Not every day. <laughs> See, I was telling you when I was in IIT, I spent a lot of time, cycling was my main life, you know. But in the Gymkhana, I took part in a lot of things. Get involved in these things. It's important to get involved in that. Forget the studies, you know. The studies, you, you're clever enough. Don't worry about that. You know, do these other things. Because when I was in my four years here, we were always talking, oh, I can't wait to get out of this place. But once you get out of that place, you wish you came back. Believe you me, those four years will be the happiest years in your life. They will be one of the happiest years in your life. Don't forget that. <laughs> I think to do exercise, be conscious of it. Some people don't do exercise. It is important to do physical exercise. Yeah, that helps your mental well-being. Yeah. Exercise, that is important, yeah. I think there is now much more awareness of that, especially in the West, you know. That means going to the gym, doing other things, even just walking, doing physical things like that. And in fact, the dancing, a lot of people in the UK, they take part in dancing just for physical activity, social activity, you interact with other people. So that is important. So the interaction on that level is important. Okay. All right. So thank you for attending. I hope you enjoyed it. And I think we will show some more again uh, tomorrow. Okay. Thank you.